Hi, my name is Dr. Jeb Wallace. I'm the horn professor at Wichita State University and principal horn with the Wichita Symphony Orchestra. Today we're going to be talking about the Concerto for Horn Opus No. 8 by Franz Strauss. Before we get started talking about the music, I'd like to say a few things about the composer. Franz Strauss is the father of uh, Richard Strauss, who is probably the more famous uh, composer in the Strauss family. He wrote music and lived during the 19th century. He was born in 1822 and died in 1905. He was a virtuoso horn player who played principal horn of the Bavarian Opera Orchestra and taught at the Royal School of Music in Munich. During Franz Strauss's life, he had the good fortune to premiere many of the Wagner operas that uh, we're familiar with today. Written in 1865, the Concerto Opus No. 8 is constructed in one continuous movement with three large sections. The sections that we'll be talking about today all occur in the first large section. In the first section, from Rehearsal A to Rehearsal B, uh, there are three very important things to consider when preparing this work. The first is that Franz Strauss was really trying to emulate the human singing voice with this piece. That informs us uh, in many aspects of our preparation. Number one, we want to create very long phrases. Number two, we want smooth, connected notes. In other words, we want to keep the air moving in a very purposeful way between the notes so it sounds seamless like the human voice. And number three, we want to keep a very steady singing eighth note subdivision at all times. The second selection occurs between Rehearsal D and Rehearsal F. This section starts with a heroic fanfare with virtuosic 16th note passages going into the upper register above the staff and then very quickly by thirds descending down below the staff. These are treacherous passages that should be practiced slowly. I like to practice them slurred first. Then I like to try practicing them in swing style, so emphasizing every other note and slurring. Gradually, then we add the, the, the tongue and articulate the notes, but play everything long. And then ultimately, uh, we can play them short and staccato as they are printed. Then at letter E, the music recedes back to the lyrical style that was presented in the first section. So it's important that we recapture that very romantic lyrical singing quality from the first section. And that takes us all the way to the end of this passage. The third and final section occurs between Rehearsal F and Rehearsal G. This section is marked animato, so it should be played slightly faster than the previous two sections. I used 100 beats per minute as a baseline in the first two sections, and so for this third section, uh, 104, perhaps 108, 
uh, is, is a good target tempo. In this section, uh, it's really very virtuosic music. It sounds very much like woodwind music. I like to imagine the sound and the nimble quality of the clarinet or the oboe when I'm performing this movement. It's important to keep the long phrase in mind, the eight bar phrases, and to keep a very steady pulse. This is particularly difficult and challenging in the fourth and eighth measure of rehearsal F where we have the grace notes. I would encourage you to start slow, perhaps around quarter note equals 66, and gradually increase the speed until you have reached your target tempo. I'd encourage you to listen to your most beautiful, round, romantic sounds, rich in overtones, on every note. Always subdivide at the eighth note or the sixteenth note level, depending on what's appropriate for each, each passage. Because this is a virtuosic piece, you'll want to use faster air in the high register and slower air in the low register. Finally, be brave, be expressive, and have fun. Good luck.